Doctor, these are the patients who will be calling you today. Hello? What? No, I can't remember. What? Your mother? Which one is your mother? Wait, hang on, hang on, Mrs. Pang. Hello? Hello, hello? You tell some more Ming. The Misha Sien. No, la. Yo. Huh? No. Hang on, ah. Hello? Hello? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. The blue one. One is enough. One is enough. Chop, 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 chop. Why don't we do it like this? You can join me on a live show where we can chat about this and that. I will try my very best to answer all of your questions. All of your questions answered by this A doc. Hey, so come join me on my show on the A Doctor Facebook page. Come and ask me, A Doctor this, A Doctor that. I will answer this, I will answer that. You. Hey, hello everybody. Welcome back to Season 2 of A hey Doctor. So good to have all of you here. Of course, we are live on Facebook tonight. And of course, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the A hey Doctor Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube channel as well. Most grateful if you do. Now today, I'm an endocrinologist by profession. And a lot of people, I mean, I just had uh, some drinks with one of my old classmates and they're like, what is an endocrinologist? Well, we are specialists in hormones. So I'm going to kick off season two, right, to talk about what I do, right? Hormones. Hormones in a nutshell. So what we'll do today uh, is go through what is a hormone, what it does to your body, how it can influence your body, what they're for, what can go wrong. And uh, I think, yeah, hopefully you guys will learn a bit if you have any questions to ask with regards to hormones, I'm going to ask. So there's going to be an interview video. We went around asking people two questions. What do you think are hormones? Why do you think hormones are important? So let's have a look at this. Something in our body, psychologically, Emotionally, um, I think hormone is the one that uh, connect the different cells like the skin, outside uh, tissues uh, to the internal tissues uh, or cells like organs. They help to regulate uh, in our body system and let our body system to flow smoothly. To me, it's uh, like a chemical messenger to your body and it helps with your body function. If I remember from my biology classes, uh, chemical messengers for um, to relay information to body, like different body parts to properly do their functions. Well, not that much, I'd say. Well, uh, endocrine hormones um, helps with growth and development, and that's why I'm pregnant. So hormone is very important that when uh, this is not stable, they will uh, deliver wrong message to our internal uh, system, our organs, so will uh, direct affect our health. So this is the importance of hormones. Because I'm epileptic, I found out that I am hormonal imbalanced. So that's why my emotions and my words, sometimes I can't control it. Hormones are very 
important. Okay, all right. So that was some interesting answers. To be honest, I haven't seen this video before. So some people are obviously paid lots and lots of attention to their biology class because yeah, they are right. So if I can have my PowerPoint be yeah, you're correct. Basically, hormones in a nutshell. The first thing that you need to know is of course what are they, and you are absolutely correct, Ryan. You are absolutely correct. Doing hormones are chemical, you know, because when one part of your body needs to talk to another part of your body, there are ways. One of the best ways is of course using a nerve floor. You know, you want to tell your left little finger this, your brain that directly go to your left little finger and this. Hormones work a bit differently. Hormones enter into your bloodstream. Okay, they are chemical messengers that are sort of secreted by different glands in the body. Yeah. And they travel in your blood. They travel in your blood to the target organ. And this causes changes in the body. These changes actually can be pretty fast. These changes can be like immediate. Okay? Because you know when they say you get an adrenaline rush, right? So you go and sit on, a, I don't know, a, a, a roller coaster, you get an adrenaline rush, right? Your heart is pounding, beating very fast. That adrenaline, adrenaline is actually a hormone, it's something that comes out of the adrenal glands and then it goes all over your body, okay? It makes your heart beat faster, it makes you excited, feel excited, okay? It makes you even perhaps. Uh, sweat a little bit less as well, okay. But so hormones they can cause these changes in the body, and they can also not act fast, right? They can act very slowly. So for example, another hormonal change, of course, puberty lah. All of us go through it. That takes time as well. So little quiz for you all, okay? Hormones can control each of the following steps: growth. So already, uh, Swing Su said that she was pregnant. This definitely, I'm pregnant because of hormones. Uh, actually, to be quite honest, you're pregnant. Okay. Um, yeah, there's, there are some hormones involved, lah. But you know, ultimately, hormones is not the father of your baby, right? So, um, uh, hair can hormones control hair? Um, yeah, definitely. As in, uh, you want hair to grow on your face. Hair to grow elsewhere on your head. Hormones are definitely there. I already told you that hormones control heart rate. Can it control hunger? Did you know that the hunger that you feel is mediated by not one but many different hormones? The two two main ones are these things called ghrelin and leptin. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone that makes you feel hungry, and leptin is the one that makes and if you get imbalance in all these, you will forever, forever be feeling hungry. And that's something that we can talk about. Um, so we already have some questions. Karine Chan Gulik. Um, hello, Karine. Welcome to the show. Does COVID affect hormones in the body? Right? Oh, press send. Uh, send. Well, I can just read out, right? Does COVID affect hormones? Now, Karin, when I look at you, uh, there's two of you. Oh, I know who you are already. Right. You live in Section 17. Tadika. One of you has an American husband. Okay. Anyway, I know who you are. Does COVID affect hormones in the body? Yes, absolutely. COVID can affect um, different hormones in the body. You know, actually, COVID, uh, it, a lot of people think it's just flu and then lungs. But, you know, it's also been shown to affect other organs. And yes, it can affect hormones. You thyroid problems, you adrenal problems. It can affect insulin, which is actually a hormone which comes from the pancreas. Those are you have your problems. So absolutely, COVID can affect the body. Now, I've already just told you that hormones can affect hunger. Okay, so if you feel hungry all the time, maybe it's a hormonal imbalance, and there are ways that we can overcome that. Okay. Can it affect temperature, as in how hot you feel? Um, absolutely, it can. Okay, we have a little gland in our neck called the thyroid that can actually 
affect your basal metabolic rate. How much heat that your body makes at any given time, whether you're in aircon or whether you're in the desert, okay, it can be controlled by this. And if there's a malfunction of this gland, sometimes you can start to feel really hot all the time or even really cold all the time. You know, you could be in the middle of a freezing snowy desert, uh, snowy uh, uh, Siberia, but still feel hot. All right, so that's one of the weird things. Or you can even be in a really, really hot desert and still feel cold. Okay, so temperature also affected by hormones. So can hormones control toys? Can or not? Actually, it's a trick question. I said each of the following except hormones can control each of the following except. And you would think toys. But actually, um, there is this really, really interesting research was done on monkeys. Okay, and you can uh, look it up, vervet monkeys, V-E-R-V-E-T. So they got these uh, uh, kid monkeys, right? These, these are uh, monkeys which are very, very young. They are like toddler monkeys. And it's very weird. What they did was they had the male kid monkeys and the female kid monkeys, right? And then they gave them different toys and they measured the amount of time and the amount of interest each monkey had Time with these toys. So you can see here, one of the kid monkeys is playing with a toy car. The other kid monkey, you can't see it very clearly because this is an old experiment, was actually playing with a toy doll. And guess what? The boy monkeys spent more time playing with the toy car. The girl monkeys spent more time playing with the dolls. Right? So these are monkeys, they are not exposed to Toys R Us, they are not exposed to marketing, advertisements, right? I bet you before they were in the experiment, they never even seen a toy car before, they never seen a toy doll before. And yet the boy monkeys were more object-driven play, right? This thing can roll and can move, the wheels can spin. I like it, okay? The girl monkeys were very person-driven, this is a doll. Right? It's humanoid in form. It's something that I can relate to, you know, and sit and, I don't know, play masa masa. So that's very interesting because definitely the, 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 the difference is due to the fact one is male and one is female. And of course, that is also down to the male and female hormone mix either. So again, super, super interesting uh, there. So what makes hormones so special? You only need a very tiny little bit of amount. They are measured in nanomoles and picomoles, right? Not even uh, millimoles. So very, very tiny amounts can make a really big, huge difference. It's the huge difference between whether you're a boy or a girl, for example, okay? And you need your hormones actually to be oops, the right amount, okay? Even though it's very little, at the right time. And I'm going to explain this a little bit more, okay? At the right place, and at the right person, right? Right time, right place, right person, right amount, and magic can happen. Now, uh, I have a, another question. Okay, Karine, I won't put it up. Uh, how can a person always be happy or sad? Is this because of hormones too? Well, actually, happy and sad, they are happy and sad. There is a happy hormone, right? It's not really a hormone, it's actually a neurotransmitter. Here's the interesting thing, right? When, when this thing connects different parts of your brain, the nerves in your brain are signaling each other, it's the same chemical called dopamine, but in that case, we classify it as a neurotransmitter. But if dopamine goes into your heart, right, and the signal is transferred to your heart, the same dopamine chemical is entering your bloodstream, going into your heart, we then call it a hormone. So dopamine in the brain is your happy hormone. But guess what? There are some things that hormones control absolutely and you can't do anything about it. So for example, I said temperature, right? For example, yeah. And guess what? You can't really do much. Heart rate, you can't really do all that much. But things like happy and sad, falling in love, right? Things like attraction, things to a certain extent like even your desire to eat food. The great thing about human beings is that we are not monkeys and we have a higher function. We have a brain which is so well developed. Actually, we can overcome some of our hormonal urges 
as well. So to a certain extent, being happy or sad can be due to a hormonal imbalance or more specifically, most likely due to a neurotransmitter imbalance in your brain. Same chemical, dopamine, it can be classified as a hormone but it can also be classified as a neurotransmitter and that can lead to depression or in fact, mania which is the opposite. So I think that's a really great uh, and interesting question. Christine, hair loss now because of epilepsy, is there any way to help it from dropping so much? Yeah, you know Christine, hair loss is never fun now, nah, you know. Just ask my producer Anthony. Have you seen Anthony before? I think he came out in one of the sort of uh, prep videos for this. Hair loss, no good. Okay, so uh, yeah, he's making all sorts of things and trying to distract me now, but I'm not going to be distracted by him, Christine. Okay, so hair loss, there are many, many, many different causes. Okay. Now, um, stress in itself can cause hair loss. Not sleeping enough, eating too much salt, taking certain medications, using the wrong shampoo, being under the wrong weather, being it too dry, etc. All these things can actually cause hair loss and it's not easy. I think what you do need to do is have those things which are under your control, under your control. Right? So for example, using a milder shampoo, okay? making sure you don't have to put salt in your diet, making sure you have a healthy diet, making sure that you get enough rest at night. So that's, that's one of the things, these are the things that are under your control. If you still cannot lay, if you're still getting hair loss, yes, you go and get some of these hormones checked. You come and see a doctor like me, an endocrinologist, but you might also need to be a trichologist or a dermatologist. A trichologist is a hair specialist, a dermatologist is a skin specialist as well, and they can help you work through whether your hair loss is actually due to hormonal loss or due to uh, other causes. Um, Sharon, yes, hello, how are you? How many types of hormones does a human have? Okay, they are literally a hundred plus, right? Some of them have very minor specific roles, some of them have very major roles as well. Okay, and we are still counting and sort of um, classifying different uh, hormones uh, still. Ryan Tan, I get cold very easily to the point where it seems abnormal. Cold in air-conditioned room, but everyone else seems fine. You're supposed to be cold in an air-conditioned room. Lah. If, the air, if, you're, if you're not cold in an air-conditioned room, it's called the aircon serviceman needs to come. You don't come, you don't come and see me. You go and see aircon serviceman, okay? But everyone seems fine. Should that be a cause for concern? What should I look for? Uh, look out for to know if I should get my thyroid checked. So if you are feeling cold all the time, it might be that you are having an underactive thyroid. Okay, what you, you uh, can look out for is you gain weight very easily, you feel very slow, hair loss, okay, feeling cold all the time and your pulse rate is very low as well. But some of these things, right, um, they are not very specific. You know, for example, like uh, let's say eating too much, gaining weight easily, losing hair, Right, feeling tired all the time. That's basically how I'm feeling now at it's 9 p.m. and I just finished work. Okay. So yeah, if you're really suspecting that you have a thyroid problem, it's very easy. Go and get your thyroid function test uh, tested. You go into any lab or any doctor and say, look, I, I need to check my thyroid blood test. Okay, and they can very uh, easily uh, do to you. Okay. Um should we taking birth control medicine? Okay for endometriosis issue. You sure it's for endometriosis or like is your boyfriend's name endometriosis? Okay, right. Okay, should I wait? Taking birth control medicine caused weight gain as I have an increased appetite. Is it true? Yeah, um, sometimes, yes, that can be the case. So, but remember what I told you earlier on, there are things which, um, yes, you can't help. To a certain extent, you may not be able to help your appetite, but also to a certain extent as human beings, we can control our appetite. So we can't control our heart rate, we can't control our temperature, but appetite is definitely something that we can control. The other thing about birth control pills or any form of uh, these female hormone blends, right, is that they are made slightly differently. Okay, they have different blends of types of the hormones that are being used and different milligrams, different doses. So maybe it's a matter also of finding the right one uh, for you. You know, it's like like coffee, la, you know, you have different types of coffee. Some is more bitter, some is more black, right? You add milk, what kind of milk do you add? Do you add full cream milk? Do you add uh, skim milk? So it, it makes a difference to the taste of your coffee. 
as well. You know, and I was instructed to show off all this merchandise by Anthony Brown. Okay, so yeah, promo. So if you all want to put your company logo here or your face here, apparently and one, you just get in touch with him and then you'll gladly take your money and put. Um, so let's talk back about hormones. Right amount, right time, right place, right person. So obviously we must have the right amount lah, because if you have too much, you have this condition called hyper. If you have too little, called hypo. So it's very easy to remember, you know, when you say somebody is hyper, that's because too much, right? Too fast, everything is just going too fast. Too little is hypo, right? Hypo is slow. Hypo is too little, okay? Um, yeah, hypo, hippo, okay? So for example, hyperthyroid versus hypothyroid. Just now, Ryan, I was saying that you might have hypothyroidism. Go and get your blood test checked, yeah? So this is what somebody who has hypothyroidism looks like in picture number A, right? And once we treated her, once she was treated by her endocrinologist, she turned to person B. It's the same person. How do you know it's the same person? Because she's wearing the same spec. Let me tell you, nobody in the world wears this kind of spec. Cannot. It must be the same person. How many people do you know who wear that kind of specs? Right? Like honestly. Okay, this is like, I don't know, Dr. Octopus's grandma. I don't know. But you can see her hair is dry, falling out, you know, unkempt. You can see that she's a lot fatter, she has gained weight, she looks depressed, her eyelids are drooping. Okay, yeah, so this is someone who's hypothyroid and as soon as we re rebalanced everything, made everything better, completely different person has lost weight, okay, uh, now bothering to comb her hair, her hair looks a lot better, less dry, eyes also big big already, okay, but case in spectacles, unfortunately, we could not show that, unfortunately, okay, still the same spec. Now, right amount also needs to be at the right time. So an example of it is prolactin. Okay? Prolactin is a breastfeeding hormone. Okay? And there are certain times and disorders where men can get prolactin. So wrong person. Right? Women can get prolactin, but they are not pregnant and they are not breastfeeding. Right? And it's a very weird situation. They'll come and tell, hey, my bra all wet. Why? Because got fluid or got milk coming out. Okay? So the hormones are there to serve a purpose is to make milk make milk come out but if you have it at the wrong time no baby still got milk oh oh all right um you know don't call farmer brown come and see somebody like me because you need to get treatment to uh you know stop the milk from coming out the second thing is estrogen okay you need the right amount you need a little bit okay to have your female uh, appearance right your menses and everything but you need a lot more when you're pregnant, for example. Okay? And you need to go through menopause and not have uh, uh, anything. So a woman who beyond the age of menopause, you know, 70 years old, still having periods, you're in trouble, right? You're still having too much hormones at the wrong time. If you don't have the right hormones during puberty, you don't go through puberty, right? And what you get is a 24-year-old who still looks like a 6-year-old, who still looks like a 13-year-old. And that, again, is a problem, okay? So you also need, for example, insulin. You need it to come out when you eat, right? So that you can sort of digest your carbohydrates, yeah? your sugars. Yeah? So again, hormones, you need to have the right amount, but you also need to have it at the right time, at the right place. Okay? You have it at the wrong place, you will look like my producer. You'll get male pattern balding. Yeah? Okay? So you, you can see people with M shape, right? That's your classic male pattern. In building, you have an M at the top of the uh, head, and it needs to be in the right person as well. So, if you have breast cancer, you don't want to have too, too much female hormone, right? Because that female hormone will drive your breast cancer to grow. Likewise, if you have prostate cancer, you don't want too much male hormone because it will cause your prostate cancer to get worse, okay? If you are obese as well, you want to be losing weight, you want to be able to not have an overdrive of ghrelin, which is your hunger hormone, right? Otherwise, you'll be feeling hungry all the time. And the counterpart of that, leptin, you want, don't want okay, to be lacking in leptin because leptin is the, the hormone which actually makes you feel full. Uh, yeah, did I say that right? Yeah. So, hormones, very important, right? Absolutely very important. Not just important for 
uh, swing to become pregnant. Okay, yes, you need some. You also need a kiss. Okay, but you need the right amount. You need the right time. You need the right place and in the right person uh, as well. So I got a little test for you. Uh, Dr. Alex can help you. I love the T-shirt and the mugs. Okay, I went belt. Uh, I went bald at 22. Hoo hoo. Okay, right. Thank you for sharing that. So what hormones are at play here when you actually look? Okay, let me tell you. I name all the hormones one by one, right? Okay, I name all of them and I sort of say, hey, this causes this, this causes that. But actually, it's a blend. Honestly, you're not just one hormone at a time. Right? So when you look at this couple, right, they're obviously on a date. They're both smiling, happy. Okay? Um, there's some wine in his hand. There's some food in front of her. Okay? So what hormones do you think I play here? Definitely the male hormone is driving the man. Female hormone would be driving the female. There's going to be a bit of the pleasure hormone as well, the dopamine at play both parts. They are having a meal, so therefore the hunger hormones to a certain extent may be at play. If they have actually eaten, okay, insulin again may be at play. All right. Um, other hormones that might be there, right? He might be nervous, she might be nervous. So again, there might be a little bit of adrenaline and the sister of adrenaline, no adrenaline at play. They may both be stressed meeting you for the first time. So cortisol, that mix is there. And so what I hope you can take away is that all these things act in conjunction. They are kind of, you know, going to a restaurant and ordering, you know, a, a, a Japanese Wagyu steak. But it's not just that one single piece of meat. A lot of process has gone into it. A lot of the way the chef has cooked it and mixed all the ingredients together. And that's what your hormones do. Um, we have another question. Eating yummy foods can increase happy hormone, LOL. Yeah, many things can increase happy hormone. right? So yeah, definitely both of them eating uh, yummy foods can increase happy hormone. True? Okay. Uh, Christine, I'm guessing all men here are second guessing about women going through menopause and scolding everyone kau kau gila. It's because... Yeah, hormones, uh, laughing face, laughing face, laughing face. Let me send that out. Okay. And scolding everyone, kau kau gila, it's because of their hormones. Well, you know, that's the thing. One thing that I haven't sort of said also is that different people have different experiences with the same levels of hormones. Right? And if you talk to women who have gone through menopause, some of them go through menopause, no problem. And in fact, they are very happy. They said, okay, la, finally, you know, uh, I'm not, I don't need to go and buy sanitary pads or tampons anymore. Right? Okay? That part of my life is over. For some other women, same process and it really, yeah, it's true. It can drive them kau kau, gila. They get hot flushes, they get insomnia, they sweat at the wrong time. And all that, you know, can build up. Then it's it's very true that when you give them back the hormones, right? Just give them a little bit back to help tie them over. They feel so much better. They sleep better. They stop getting hot flushes. So yeah, it's true, lah, Christine. Menopause can cause problems, but not in every uh, lady. I'm sure you know some people who've gone through menopause it wasn't too big an issue. Some people who've gone through menopause, it was actually quite a big issue. So yeah, thanks for bringing them. Up. So if we go back to um, the couple uh, who are on a date, what hormones are at play here? Plenty of different hormones. Actually, even the breastfeeding hormone prolactin is also a little bit at play here. It does cause, right? It does rise with a small amount of stress, okay? And it can also cause satisfaction and attraction towards the opposite sex as well. So even that has got a minor role here. I mean, obviously, she's not making milk now. Lah. Okay. But because if she was making milk and have, oh, oh, while she was on a date, lah, let me tell you, her smile isn't going to be like that. Um, yeah, so anyway, 
right? It's a whole lot of hormones uh, which are at play and they really keep you running and in a way also make you who you are. So, um, okay, with that, I think, thank you very much um, for your very kind attention. Um, I hope I've been able to answer all the questions from all the viewers. I kind of did it as we went along. Um, so, thank you. That was Hormones in a Nutshell. And thank you for watching. Stay tuned for some upcoming announcements. Uh, we have got next month's topic ready already. I used to do it on the fly, you know, and really very ad hoc. But, you know, my producer has actually forced me and tightened me down and said, hey, you cannot do this. Lah. I used to prepare things like one day beforehand. So, tired all the time, could hormones be to blame? I think you already know the answer to that. But if this is you, tired all the time, stay tuned for the next episode, which will be on, I don't know, I forgot, right? Must be my hormones. So thank you very much for watching, uh, watching <laughs> for watching, right? Too much coffee to drink and whatever else I was drinking with you, Adrian Tan. Uh, thank you for watching and have a very good night. Bye-bye.